Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great, whew, thirsty Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, and oh my goodness, we are getting close, people. Close, close, close. I got some work to do tomorrow and Saturday. And then we got to get ready for the draft. We got to get ready for the draft because we are going to the Motor City. My main man, Game Time Brian, my man, Chef David Wiley. And of course, we've got Game Time and Prime Time, and we'll be broadcasting all the time from Detroit. I might not sleep. I might not sleep because it's all we got, man. The draft is all we got. And I can't wait to get there and bring you guys coverage that will be uniquely Joe Boo Sports. So we are looking at the future generations. And as I was riding back home from work today, um, I was listening to um, speak. You know, I was going to say speak for yourself, but it's just speak. And they do a lot of just speaking. And their topic was what Matt Miller from ESPN had said. He said that Clab Williams for eventual enshrinement in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Clab is most likely player in the class to become a Hall of Famer per an NFL scout. You know, I like to, it's kind of funny that Jerry Jones said, you know, we're all in. Because, you know, when you start thinking about gambling in the NFL, you can't think, separate the two of them. But I want you to understand that typically a wide receiver, as the Eagles know, and a quarterback are really a crapshoot. You got about a 50-50 chance of them being great or 50-50 chance of them being ass-ass. And quite frankly, in the last few years, you've seen more that have been ass-ass than anything else. There is no such thing. Every time I hear, you know, can't miss player, more times than not, they miss on them. It's the players that they don't really think a lot about that become the greatest. Tom Brady was not a first-round drafted quarterback, guys. Sixth round. One of the best quarterbacks the Cowboys ever had, Tony Romo, undrafted rookie free agent. One of our Hall of Fame players, Drew Pearson, undrafted. Roger Staubach, 12th round. But let me, for me, okay, you got to understand I'm old. And let me set this stuff up because I am told I am not part of the media. And I guess actually technically, when I first started, I actually wrote for what used to be called Cover 32 Dallas Cowboys. And I did a story which is kind of deja vu for me right now because it ended up changing a lot of different things for me. Because, see, back in 1989, um, there was a guy who was thought to be the best ever. Tony Mandarich, okay? 1989, he worked out on Muscle Beach. He was big. They called him the Incredible Bulk. Six foot six, 315 pounds. Tony Mandarich, the best offensive line prospect ever. Ever. Forever, ever. Now, he did have a seven-year career, but he never reached the heights of what they thought, and to this day is considered a bust. And here's the thing that's funny, because, see, history repeats itself. Because I wrote... I wrote about how you don't know what you're going to get in the NFL draft, that it's a crapshoot. Everybody wanted Tony Mandridge, the number two pick in the draft. And I want you to understand here, when we look at that draft, the first five picks are all Hall of Famers except for Tony Mandridge. Troy Aikman went first, Tony Mandridge went second, Barry Sanders went third, Derek Thomas went fourth, and Dion went fifth. And this guy is the one that they were the highest on. 
when I wrote this article, I wrote about everybody thought Tony Mandritz, best prospect ever. I said, but then there was a guy drafted in the fourth round from a Division I AA school that did not have a winning record the whole time he was there. Drafted in the fourth round that became the first player to have five Super Bowl rings and literally was a power shift from San Francisco to the Dallas Cowboys. And that was Charles Haley. I used that and wrote that. And this was during the time of the many years that Charles Haley was not getting into the Pro Football Hall of Fame because it was, I believe, five times that he was there but never got in because they said of the off-field issues and things and all that. He's bipolar. I wrote this at that time. And what's interesting is to tie in because Charles Haley came from JMU. Charles Haley, again, fourth round draft pick. Nobody thought he was going to be the player he was. What's interesting is after that time, after I wrote that article on cover 32, not being a journalist, um, my wife will say, I am an incredible writer is what she will say. My problem is, is I don't have the mechanics. And it was a collaboration. I would write it out, my thoughts and stuff, and she would edit it uh, to make it make sense. Charles Haley, at that time, changed his Facebook profile picture to Joe Boo. True story. Now, you can choose to believe that or not. That's up to you, purely up to you. But here's the thing about anointing people before they've even gotten into the NFL. How many times have we gone through and said, this guy is it? I'm going to give you this one from first take, and this, this is probably going to get copyrighted, so I'll probably have to cut it out if I do. But Dan Orlowski... Used to, one of his things was he would always say Carson Wentz. This is after Carson Wentz has, has been drafted. Carson Wentz has a Hall of Fame pedigree. Now, I'm not sure what the hell that means. I would say if Archie Manning, who had Peyton Manning, and you know Eli is going to be there, that their brother, he's got a Hall of Fame pedigree because he's got everybody in his family going into it. That I can understand, and that would make sense. But Dan Orlowski used to say, Carson Wentz has a Hall of Fame pedigree. But even after he was run out of town, was the big first, first time a quarterback, they had a $30 million plus dead money hit just to say goodbye, goes to Indianapolis and gets run out, and goes to the commanders. It's funny when you listen to Dan Orlowski defend Carson Wentz on week number one, where he was the commander's quarterback. Let's listen to this. Who's the best quarterback in the NFC East right now? Yeah, with Dak out, it's Carson Wentz. You know, and me, don't give me that. All right, week one, there were three quarterbacks in the NFL that played lights out awesome football. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. And then there was a group right beneath them, another three or four guys that played really, really good. Carson Wentz was one of them. Over 300 yards, four touchdowns. He was, and they threw the heck out of the football against those pass rushers that, here's the thing, Stephen A. Last year, week 18, against that very same Jaguars defense, Carson Wentz played poorly, right? Played poorly. I'm just telling you the truth. The tape, he threw the absolute tar out of the football in week one. And the thing that I liked about it the most, and I'm telling everybody, one, this offense in Washington is going to be good. They're really fast that he started off really good. He was lights out on fire. And then he had back-to-back -back interceptions thrown. One on an out route that he threw behind the receiver, and then one on a screen pass that Trayvon Walker, the number one pick, makes a ridiculous play. Through and pass we've seen, receiver, but certainly, he was great. me admitting, the roller coaster ride of Carson Wentz. And even after those two interceptions, in the past, he often allows those to, like, impact them. And then it be, it's just wheels are off. He came and led back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. He made big-time throw after big-time throw after big-time throw. 
He played phenomenal. He wasn't Josh Allen, it wasn't Patrick, and it wasn't Justin Herbert, but it was right underneath those guys performance-wise. Jalen played really good. I think he's in a phenomenal situation. He's going to have a really good season. But right now, Car just play in the position, throw in the ball. Carson Wentz is the best in the division. Um, I just want to make sure that the audience remembers, because based off the soliloquy that Dan Orlovsky just mm. spewed over the natural airwaves, they may have forgotten that Carson Wentz was playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, I just want to make sure everybody remember <laughs> who they were playing against, okay? The Jacksonville Jaguars, okay? That's fine. I mean, just, oh, but, uh, you just go forget the back-to-back -back interceptions that he did. That no, he, he literally just stated them. Excuse, excuse me. He, uh, and he almost buried them. That's why That's why Ron Rivera was talking about. What, what was Ron Rivera talking about in the aftermath of the games? You know what the head coach of a football team went in front of the National media was talking about his need to take an assets because that's what does Carson Wentz will do to I'm you. I'm not disagreeing that's with what, that. That's what he said. He said hey, what did he say? Carson Wentz sitting up there beating himself over the head, albeit for seconds, because he threw back-to-back -back interceptions on consecutive throws. And Ron Rivera told him, you have to go win this. You have to go make up for it. And to his credit, He's done. But what is Carson Wentz does? He's hit and he's missed. He's very inconsistent, and he will cost you games. It's what he does. It's I... just what he does. All right, I'm going to leave it right there because this whole thing of already anointing a guy who hasn't even been drafted and remind you, let me remind you, it's going to be the Bears that are going to draft him. And the Bears, in their history, one of the oldest franchise in football, have never had a 4,000-yard passer. Ever. Ever. So, do with this as you may. Do with it as you may. But I hate to tell you, when you get stuff like this, of course, I'm told you could never work for ESPN. Uh, okay, that's cool. I didn't ask for a job with ESPN. I'm happy doing exactly what I do here, um, which is getting underneath a lot of people's skin because Lord knows I get emails. I get Facebook posts. I get tweeted at people telling me I'm an idiot, which means then my job as an influencer is working because I am influencing people. I'm Mark Holmes. And I appreciate you guys. Peace out. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in their eyes. I like those. It seems distant. Strange. I'm going to make them an awful camera.